and welcome to today's Gale Forest Twins episode where we are going to be teaching you all how to catch, clean, and cook mahi and even more specifically mahi tacos. We are on our way out right now but before we head out to go catch the mahi, first we're going to show you our rig, we're going to talk about our technique, then we're going to go out there, show you how it's done, come back to the dock, fillet the fish, get those beautiful white flaky fillets and then we'll be in the kitchen making mahi tacos. My name's Amanda. My name is Emily, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. Now when we go out mahi fishing, we primarily go out with two different setups. The first one is our conventional traditional trolling setup, and that is our Gale Force trolling rod. We are so excited because it is almost available to you. We have been working for multiple years on creating the perfect trolling rod that we want to offer to you guys. So if you want to be notified when it's available, galeforcegear.com forward slash subscribe and you will be notified. So that is the rod, the reel. We are pairing it with a pen fathom two and we have spooled it with 50 pound braid. From that 50 pound braid, we added a 20 pound mono top shot. Now a top shot is basically just a large portion, semi-large portion of additional line on top of your braid. So for us, we did maybe around 100 yards of 20 pound mono top shot. And our choice for top shot is because if the mahi jumps in the air, that extra mono is going to stretch as opposed to from going from the braid straight to the leader you don't have as much stretch with that. So adding a mono top shot does give stretch if your fish is jumping, if you have an inexperienced angler, it just helps a little bit. However, mono top shots, you're gonna need to replace them more often, stretch them out, and if they're just sitting on the spool for a year before you use it, you probably wanna replace it. Whereas braid, you don't have to worry about replacing it. It's pretty much good to go until it runs low. On to the more exciting part. So we tie a bimini on our 20 pound mono, and we tie that straight to a snap swivel. And we like to do a snap swivel because it makes changing your lures out very easy. The leader we're using is a 40 pound floral carbon leader. I like to tie a perfection loop on the end of my leader. You can also crimp this or you can tie, you can completely skip the swivel and tie straight to your main line if you want as well. But we like to tie a swivel because it just makes for easy lure changes and leader changes if the fishing is crazy and you just need to really quickly switch your rig or your line is chafed and you need to re-rig, you can just quickly clip it off and clip a fresh one on. We usually do around five feet of leader, maybe a little bit more. And the reason for that is because we really just want the fish as close to the boat as possible without having to leader that fish in, especially because there's only two anglers, me and Emily on the boat. If you have really long leaders, then you gotta worry about leadering it and gaffing it at the same time. So we just five foot leader, it's really all you need. Down to the lure. So our favorite lure and our favorite colors are blue and white, pink and white. And it is basically anything with a flat, concave, chugger head type lure because it's going to make bubbles and it's going to make action. It's gonna kind of skip on the surface. Mahi, love that. Blue and white is one of our favorite colors. The brand of this lure is Island Lure. We will go ahead and link all the details for this rig in the description box, so don't stress out. It'll be linked below for you. From the lure, we like to add a mylar. This one is a weighted mylar with a little weighted head, but you don't need a weighted mylar for this, like I said, because they're just on the surface these lures were basically surface fishing we're not going to be doing any kind of diving baits today after that we like to tie a uni knot straight to a 7oj hook it is pretty simple pretty straightforward and we'll probably run one of these in blue and white and one of them in pink and white today and we'll see which one's getting more bites if maybe the blue and white's doing better we might switch or maybe we'll leave them both kind of we'll go out there and figure it out together Next, we have our second rig. So our second rig is basically, we like to bring around four spinning rods set up with circle hooks. For spinning rods, we are using our 15 to 30 pound Gale Force Do-It-All rod, which currently is available. It's a composite rod, medium action, perfect for mahi going out there, casting, having a great time. And on the Gale Force Do-It-All rod, we like to pair a pen slammer. 6,500 to 7,500 size is perfect. And it's also spooled with, I believe this one's spooled with around 40 pounds braid. Since we're not worried about changing out lures for this one, we tie a bimini on our braid and a double uni straight to our floral carbon leader. For this one, we also do around five feet a liter, but with no swivel, you can wind right up. So if you do 10 feet a liter, you're perfectly fine. And all we attach to the end of that 
is a 5.0, a 5.0 7.0 size circle hook. Our last rig is adding a little tuna feather out there. Sometimes when you're going mahi fishing, you can get into the tunas and sometimes the mahi prefer a tuna feather. So we're gonna go out there and we'll troll probably two mahi lures and one tuna feather. It is braid straight to a 40 pound floral carbon leader to any kind of tuna feather. It's just a little feathery lure. It's great with that 7.0 J hook. It's perfect to go out there and make your long in case there's a tuna out there or smaller mahi that want to come and eat it. That's going to be all three rigs we go out mahi fishing with and I'll briefly kind of tell you how we use them but we're going to go out there and get in detail with you as well. So we're going to go out, we're going to run and gun, we're going to look for birds and life. We are going to look for anything that might be carrying fish. That could be weed lines that could be trash in the water it could be a floater it could be birds diving it could be a current edge it could be a, a change in water color it could be anything like that that's what we're looking for and we're going to run around in our boat when we see something that looks fishy especially birds we're going to stop we're going to throw out our two mahi lures on our conventional rigs in the back of the boat and we're just going to put those two out there's only two of us so we like to keep it really simple it's super easy we're going to go out there we're going to troll those two lures as we're out there, let's say we catch a fish, we're gonna reel it in, leave them in the water, and that's when the circle hooks come into play. We're gonna bait up our circle hooks and we're gonna toss those out because the school can follow that one fish that we caught on the troll and reeled that in. For bait, mahi love ballyhoo, ballyhoo chunks, pinfish, squid, pilchards, goggle eyes sometimes, small ones, maybe big ones if it's a slammer, live bait, whatever it is you can find, mahi will eat. Today we brought whole ballyhoo, we cut up some ballyhoo chunks at the dock, we brought some squid, and we brought some pinfish. And all that bait is what you're gonna be putting on your spinning rod with that circle hook. So when you reel in that one fish that you caught on the troll, you can now cast out your dead bait, your live bait, whatever it is, to hopefully the school coming up behind that first fish. So we're gonna go out there though, we're gonna slow down a little bit and show this to you in action. To summarize, we have our spinning rods. Three of them back here have circle hooks and one has that tuna feather. We also have a couple extra on the bow. And then we have our trollers. So we brought out two trolling rods and they each have those, what we like to call mahi lures, those island lures, the pink and white and blue and white. The trollers are gonna be used when we see weed lines to troll the weed lines. And the spinning rods with circle hooks are going to be used when we get into a school of fish and we want to start catching multiples at a time, plus that tuna feather for bonus in case we get into some tuna. fish versus not on fish. If they're not on fish, 
they're gonna be flying. And I know that might sound very straightforward, but it does take a little bit of practice to kind of watch and observe the bird. So a fish that's not hot, they'll just fly nice and steady. It might, it might, you know, dip down a little, keep flying, but what you really wanna find is that hot bird. And that hot bird, what it's gonna do is gonna be doing circles. It's going to go high, do a nice little circle, go down, do a nice little circle, hit the water, eat some bait, and then go back up. Now sometimes you'll find a couple hot birds. Our general rule of thumb is if you find two to three working birds, aka hot birds, you, they'll typically be on mahi. If you find dozens and dozens of birds, I'm talking 20, 30 birds, that's typically tuna. Now then again, that's typically. Sometimes you can find mahi in what looks like the tuna birds and tuna in the mahi birds. So what happens is there's a bait on the surface and the fish underneath the surface are eating the bait from underneath the surface and the birds in the sky are eating the bait from above the surface. And that's how you get that working bird situation. So what's really happening is those birds are eating bait and underneath those bait are you're gonna be your mahis and your tunas. We just found a really good grouping of four active birds. They're hot, they're diving. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just start with putting out our two mahi lures. Um, one of them I'm gonna put out around 40 seconds behind the boat. The second one I'll put out maybe 20 seconds behind the boat. For mahi specifically, they are, it's okay if the lures are in the whitewash, but for tuna, you want them way out, like 60 seconds. So since this is mahi, I'll do 40 seconds on one. That's probably around 40 seconds. I'm gonna actually just put this on this side. Second one going out, we'll do around 20 seconds. And we've got like around four birds. So it's like the perfect number for mahi birds, for like diving hot birds, circling. And what's our water depth, Emily? We are in 660 feet of water. Feet of water. It's pretty much perfect. I'll turn my clickers on. Uh, we're on. Emily, we're are we on. double? We're double. Reel on one, pick one right. and reel on it. All right, we're on. They're mahis. Take the boat out of gear. We got some mahis on. This is gonna be interesting. Right. Emily, we're doubled. All Can right, you I got it. Can grab the second one? Yeah, I got it. Okay, so is the boat out of gear? It's out of gear. Okay, so boat's out of gear, which is what you really wanna do to um, try to try get with the school me, Amanda. with you. Yep, I'm over top. So we're trying, we wanna get the school with us. Now, ideally, we wouldn't double. <laughs> And the other person. I mean, could. it's not a bad thing to double, Amanda. <laughs> it is not a bad thing to double up. So, once Emily, once your boat, once your fish is at the. All right, I got my okay. fish to the boat. Emily's fish is at the boat. We have our pre-cut chunks of ballyhoo, and I'm going to start tossing them out because if there's a school around, we want to encourage the school to stick around because there's food here. We have a source of food. Now, what I'm going to do is take this chunk and put on one of those circle hooks that we rigged earlier and try and land some of those fish that are in that school. The school follow, the school's here. We got the school. Let's try to land another mahi. Amanda, yours? Mine's not a keeper either, but he's a little bigger. All right, I got, I got one on. I believe I got bit. Mahi on, on the spinning rod. All right, Amanda, oh my goodness, there, I think there might be some keepers in here. There so. might be some keepers in the school. Got the whole school behind the boat, Amanda. Whole school is behind the boat, all right. Okay, Amanda, if this one's a keeper, I say we get him in the boat. There we go, he's in the boat. He looks like he's just about a 20-incher. Okay, that was just textbook getting onto a school of mahi. We trolled past him, we got, we hooked up, we doubled, we put them around the rod holders. We only brought one in the boat. Well, actually only dehooked one because we knew he wasn't a keeper. Left the other one in the rod holder, threw chunks, got the circle hooks out and caught a couple. Now in a perfect world, we would have just had five, six, 10 mahi in the boat if those were keepers, but these are clearly not keepers. So I'm going to dehook this guy. Now at this point you have two options. You found where the mahi are. You can, so we're in 600 foot. The answer could be run the 600 foot area, look for more or two, go deeper. Now, when they're a little on the smaller side, I like to go deeper, knowing that I found them in 600 foot. So if I don't find them deeper, then on the way home, I can check again that 600 foot of water. We just found a second group of birds, about four, once again, four working birds, which like we said, four is like a nice number. It's promising enough to be something fishy. Oh, wow, there's a lot of birds. 
there's like multiple groups. I see we're on one group of four and I'm looking over there and I see another group of three. Definitely very mahi-like, which is awesome. Now, if it was 30 birds all together, then I'd be thinking tunas. But the fact that it's like three here and then I see about three to four over there. So I'm gonna kind of, our lures are going through that first set right now. I'm gonna kind of head to that second set, but not turn too sharply because we don't want our lures to get caught. And how fast are we going, Emily? So, I would say a good rule of thumb is to go as fast as the birds are going. Between five and seven knots, if their tuna isn't working really fast, sometimes we'll go upwards of eight to 10 knots. I know it's a pretty big variation. Right now I'm going four, but I'm going against the current. Oh, we're, we're on! on. We're done! We got All a right. fish on! Slow us down, Emily. Take us Slow out of gear. Down. Think you got a nicer fish, Amanda? I think it's definitely a little better. Oh. And I just, I hooked up. All right, Emily hooked up too. Really in. If... <laughs> Mine's a keeper or not. <laughs> the feisty ones always fool you. Keep them in the water, though. We'll keep them in the water, for sure. All right, I'll keep that guy in the water. This one of the circles took, still has a chunk yep. on it. I'm gonna just toss Perfect. that out. Ready to go. Okay. There he is. Oh, that's... It's a small guy. Small guy, too. All right, All right I'm on. You're on? Yep. When you get a chance, throw some chunks out. All right, we're on again. See if this guy's a keeper. Get the chunks going, Emily. This is exactly how to get the school. Oh yeah. Okay, we got three mahi hooked up behind the boat. Right. Nice. Our keepers. <laughs> See, hook them all. Check it out on the pink and white. We have an expression, which is when you have to think, go pink. And we got this guy on the blue and white. This, there we go, just like that. Now we need to head even deeper out. So now we're in 700, 800 foot. So we went from 600, 800, still small. But we're gonna keep going deeper. We're, we're on. on, just like that. You got him, Amanda? Yep, we're on. Reel him in nice and slow, the idea is to bring the school in with him. Now I will add that even though we are out of gear, if you have a new angler, sometimes it helps to kind of keep the motors in gear. As long as that line is tight, you're not gonna lose that fish. All right, you're on? I'm on. Okay, Here. so Emily, put yours in a rod holder on the bow. Grab the net for mine. All right, okay, we're gonna net this one. Unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you look at it, we managed to Emily, get one, fortunately. one keeper out of the school. Now, this is about, this is definitely a keeper. We just put on the deck so we knew it was a keeper and we tried to land more in the meantime, but we will measure him for you just to show you all how to measure a keeper mahi. But this here is a cow mahi or a female mahi, and you can tell because of that rounded part of its head, and here we have our first keeper of the day. Measuring this keeper mahi, the nose will be at the zero. It has to be 20 to the fork. The fork is this point right here where my thumb is pointing at it. And it's clearly well past 20, it's 22 inches. So we have a nice keeper, nice little schoolie mahi. Now that we're finally getting into the keepers, yes, we are having to pick through them, but that's about right with what I would call the fishing report. Just from talking to some friends and people that have been fishing, People are having to work right now for the keepers. Sometimes you go out and they're all keepers. Sometimes you go out and they're none of them are keepers and we're getting them here and there. So we call it two keepers now in about 900 to 1,000 foot of water. And this is going to be our designated zone. We're not gonna go necessarily deeper. We're not gonna go in. We're just gonna stay in this area and look for more keepers. We're on. All right. All right, we're doubled. Okay. Emily, come quickly, come grab. There you go. I'm over top of you. Okay. Boat's out of gear. Boat's out of gear. Double double on the mahis. Would you look like a keeper? I don't know, I just saw his dorsal fin. Yes! Good job! Get yeah. him in the Yeah! Got a nice bull. Nice job. We just landed a keeper bull mahi. I'm a little tired and winded because this guy gave quite the fight. 
You can see how colorful they get. They turn white and blue sometimes, which are the colors we're getting today. I love it when they turn this color because it's not very often you get this color. You get green and yellow a lot, but the blue and white is always fantastic. Check it out. So what makes this a bull, AKA male, is that square head. Whereas we have a female on the deck. It was a little hectic. We have a female on the deck and you guys can see that she has that rounded head. That's the female and the nice, beautiful male mahi. Emily, I think we gotta put this fish on ice. Let's get him on ice. We got quite a few keepers now. Yes, we, we do. Got a nice bowl. Yes. I think it's time for some mahi tacos. That sounds delicious. Mahi taco time. back at the dock, we are going to be demonstrating how to fillet the mahi. I'm gonna start with the schoolie mahi right here, but the good news is the technique I show you on this fish, you can apply to all mahi, and honestly, pretty much all fish, especially when they get to the larger size. Now the technique is the same, but if you're left-handed, then it's a bonus for you because I'm left-handed and I'm teaching you guys all. All right, so the first thing I like to do is make a slit on a diagonal towards the top of the head from the belly region. Now don't worry too much about how deep you go in the belly area, because that's just for the guts, but we'll go up to the head, okay? Then when I get up here, I will turn my knife, and I will run my knife, just the tip of it, not a lot, just the tip of it, down the entire fish, down the whole backbone. And I'm basically just creating my outline. This is the outline part, and this is what you can apply to, when you get to bigger fish, you can apply this technique to big snappers, bigger mahi. When I get to the tail, I like to stick through it, and go through the whole thing. Now I'm gonna do the same thing, flip the fish over, and do the same thing on this half. Again, don't worry too much about this region because this is just the organs. But when I get down to this fin here, that's how I'm going to do the same thing I did and outline it. Now some people, and I actually recommend it for beginners, so when you get your first outline on one side, flip your fish over and outline your second side. It's easier to get the outline in when you have support. So when the meat is here and this fish is supported, I recommend you outline both sides first. So I will just demonstrate that for you guys. Again, especially if you're a beginner, definitely get that outline going on both sides first. Now a benefit to the outline technique is with mahi specifically, you can rip the skin off. So you don't have to worry about skinning it afterwards. So I will demonstrate on this mahi, however, when you get to bigger fish and you start pulling the skin off like that, you can kind of get those fibers that are left behind. It like a membrane. Uh, yeah, a membrane on the fillet. So those thick, those larger mahi, I personally like don't do I actually box. don't do this for any dolphin no, or mahi don't. that I fillet. Um, it's, but I will show you guys how. It's really easy. Ready? It already started coming off. You just grab a piece and you pull on it. Kind of got to use a little bit of force, but so this is a really good technique if you're really bad at skinning fish. Though. If you're really bad at skinning fish. If you're really fish, bad at skinning fish, I highly that. recommend this. So you can kind of see the fibers, totally tasteless, totally textureless. Again, unless you get into those really big, if you get a big slammer like that gaffer, I definitely wouldn't do this technique. But once the skin is off, whether the skin is off or on, the rest of the technique is the same. We are going to take the knife and go further. And you can actually hear the knife scraping against the backbone. And I'm just going to work my knife down the fillet, down the backbone. And once I get to the spine, so I'm gonna go down the backbone to the spine of the fish. You can see the spine of the fish right here. Once you get to the spine, that's when I like to turn it around and apply the same technique on this side. So against the backbone, just taking my time, working Lifting the meat with her the right spine. here. With her, your non-dominant hand, you're gonna lift the meat up so you can see the backbone. So we and made it to working away to the spine, just like go. that. And then take this the This here is the rib cage. So I'm just holding the fillet and going up with some force. There you have it. So you have a nice, pretty perfect mahi fillet. Now this Nothing is a female. Left. She's got some roe. Definitely so has the orange stuff. That is um, female uh, mahi roe or dolphin eggs. And again, it's a female because of that rounded head. 
Now for the fillet, we have to remove the bones, the stomach, the bloodline. This is where the stomach and organs were. And I'm just going to go on either side of basically where that spine was. That's going to be the bloodline. And the bloodline is the fishy part of the fish. And for this side, I can kind of, this is the, the organ. So I'm just going to do a diagonal cut. But then I still have to remove the bloodline. And if you look, you can see that dark color. That's the, essentially the fishy, what can make fish taste fishy. And this here is all and the this bones is all, where the organs were. This is were. bones and organs, so that's going to get tossed. And I will just cut this into, you know, steak-sized fillets. Just tender like sized or tender sized. Nugget sized, chicken tender sized. To confirm that our carcasses sink, you don't want carcasses floating down your canal. They will smell. It's not pretty. So you break the backbone and poke the eyes. That's the technique to getting your carcass to sink. There he goes. And now we have the skin on both sides. So a couple options. One is when you have a long fillet like this, go straight down the center, turn your knife sideways, and run it flat with the fillet table to get that fillet off. And then you have your other side ready to go. Kind of have a handle now. Yeah. You can use the skin to hold on to it. This is my favorite way to skin tunas. Yes, I use that technique for tunas too. Okay, if you have a fillet that's like this size, you really don't want to break it in half. That's when you're going to have to maybe sacrifice, would be a good word, sacrifice a little bit of meat. To get a grip on it. Get a grip on it. Turn that knife sideways, flat with the fillet table. And just like that. Now that we are in the kitchen with our freshly caught and filleted mahi, we are going to give you all our mahi tacos recipe. But don't worry, you can sit back and relax because details for the recipe, like always, are in the description box. We are going to start by making a taco sauce. It's going to be absolutely delicious. Then we're going to season our fish, cook our fish, and build our taco. Our delicious homemade taco sauce is going to include mayonnaise, sour cream, sriracha, garlic powder, and lime. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this together into a bowl and set it to the side. For our fish fillets, we are going to season them with cumin, cayenne pepper, salt, and pepper. And we like to season them heavily. Now, if you don't want it spicy, you can go a little bit lighter on the cayenne pepper, but we think it's very delicious when you do basically equal parts cumin and cayenne pepper, and then the salt and pepper to taste. Now, for the actual fish fillets, you can see we've kind of cut them up into chunks that are gonna be a good size to put into a taco. You can choose to cut them smaller if you want, you can leave them bigger, whatever works for you, but this is how we decided to prepare ours. We are going to be pan frying our fish. Now, you can pan fry, you can grill, you can bake, you can deep fry, whatever you want, whatever you find the most flavorful. We like pan frying though because you can cook them for one to two minutes aside and make sure you don't overcook them you're basically really watching and babysitting your fish as it cooks that's why we like to pan fry our fish and with the thickness of these fillets we are going to do one to two minutes aside but adjust that based on how thick your fillets are now for the fun part we are going to build our taco and choose our toppings this is where you can get creative now emily and i decided to make we're calling it a charcuterie style taco board which includes some diced onions diced tomatoes, we have some purple cabbage for color, we have cilantro, avocado, lime, some cotija cheese, and then we have our homemade taco sauce. So let's start with building our taco. We decided to go with flour tortillas, so I'm just gonna put a nice little fish fillet in my flour tortilla, and let's come to our board. We are gonna start with, I'm gonna do some diced red onion. Let's put that, let's see. Put that in our tortilla. Let's do a little bit of tomatoes in our tortilla. 
some purple cabbage. Gotta do a little bit of everything. Don't forget the cilantro. Well, cilantro's last. Cilantro's last. Add some avocado. We'll just do a little slice of avocado. And what's next, Emily? Cheese. Let's do some cheese. Going in with some delicious taco sauce. That this looks, sauce is so good. This sauce is probably my favorite part. I'm gonna put some, make sure I can get it in every bite. And lastly, of course, don't forget to top it off with some cilantro. It is time for the taste test. Amanda, cheers. Cheers. I love, I don't know what it is, so you guys, Amanda made this taco sauce and I love it. This so taco good. sauce is so good. You could cut back on the sriracha if you don't want it spicy, but I think the spice is perfect. I feel like we say this every time, but I think this is actually one of my favorites. <laughs> Do you agree, Emily? I mean, it's up there. It's hard not to it's love hard to a good beat, fish taco. It's hard to beat a taco charcuterie board. Yes. Don't forget, you guys can use more than just mahi for these fish tacos, so details of the recipe in the description box. In the meantime, we hope you get out there, have fun, and stay safe. Where did I leave off? What um, do I say? Just start with bait. All right. That's probably what we always bring when we go out mahi fishing, which is what you're gonna go ahead and put on your, your which is what you're gonna go ahead and put on your island lure. This is, it's the islander, right? No. Island lure. Island lure what? Blue and white. Blue and white is a checkerhead. Okay. <laughs> For bait, mahi, love. The lure. Our favorite lure is this one. It is the island lure with a chugger head. Sorry. It up so you can wind the leader on. Shoot. <laughs> really? And then we go to a 7-0 circle hook. All we do J -hook. is... J-hook. J-hook, thank you. Do it one more time. Okay. Okay. 